Hi guys, time for a model update and it's week five. Five of the Red Dwarf Scratch build. Wow. Damn, these weeks are flying by. I mean, like, you know, it's June next week. We'll be halfway through the year now. Damn, it's not, it can't just be me. These weeks are pissing by. Um, yeah, week five. So, where am I at? Well, I'm, I'm, I'm definitely way past the halfway point now. Um, because it's difficult to gauge really where, where you are in the build, but um, really and truly, the thing that's really slowing me down now is all the detail and stuff. Because you, you're literally looking at a monitor, looking at the detail, copying the detail, fitting it to the red dwarf, and you're doing it for all these small little bits of detail. So that really does eat up your time. You know, you, you, you can spend a good couple of hours just detailing the side of red dwarf, and <laughs> you've done this much. So. <laughs> So and, and sometimes it gets frustrating then when you cut apart and you, you look at it and you go, that's that's completely the wrong shape. What, what what have I done? And what you've done is you've looked at one part and started cutting it, and then you've looked at another part and gone, oh no, it's the wrong shape. So I'll put that in, and then you realise you looked at two different parts. So that 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 can happen. Um, but yeah, it, it's I, I I'm happy with this progress, and I think you know Lou's going to end up with a really good looking model. So. Uh, enough of my jibber jabber. Let's get on with the update. Moving on. Okay, I have gotten the nose together. It's all sort of plugged up. All these uh, nozzles are in place now with the appropriate grill behind them. Uh, sides are blocked off as well, ready. And I've uh, made sure it's level and sitting on the uh, main body. Probably I've uh, blocked off and printed up these edges as well so that they, they are fine. Um, yeah, it, it's almost ready to, to um, be glued onto the front, you know. Um, I haven't done it just yet because I'm, I'm pretty sure I'm missing something. So I'm, I'm going to leave it for just a bit longer to have a good think about it. Um, but I've got silver on the inside as well. So that's, that's all uh, done so that there's... Uh, some sort of uh, light blocking going on in there. Um, yeah, it's it's starting to look like red dwarf, you know. Really is, and it. I mean, when the forks are on this, this thing's gonna look massive. Um, it just, you know, it looks pretty big as it is, and that whoosh. That's gonna look epic. Uh, <laughs> that is just gonna look so epic. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm really happy with the way it's going, really happy. So, um, I guess the next thing to do now is to, oh, I guess the next thing to do now is to actually get the front nose on. Um, just get that, get that all fitted. Um, and then I can, I, I mean, I've got, I've got to start detailing up the outside. What I'm doing with the outside, really, is I'm sort of, I'm putting these sort of plant on details on, um, as I'm going, I'm, I'm just doing a bit at a time because if I done it all at once, it would probably drive me nuts. Um, yes, I know. I'm, I'm well aware that I'm probably already there, but um, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to preserve what little sanity I've got, so I'm going to do it a bit at a time. Uh, but no, I mean it does. It it really does look good, and you sort of you know swing by underneath. It looks good, 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 good. Um, yeah, there's still some sanding that I've got left to do as well. Um, cause I, I, I've been kind of putting it off because I've been doing other things in in between, and I don't want to get a lot of dust around the place. Um, but yeah, I've got I've got lots and lots of little things to do now. Uh, I guess the the one major thing that I've got to do is to get these cleaned up and molded, and I've got to also do the front forks as well. I, I've been putting that off and putting it off and putting it off. I cannot put it off any longer. I have got to get those done. Okay, so right now what I'm doing is I'm just doing a bit of cleanup on some 3D printed parts. And uh, these parts here, they're not actually too bad. There's a nice little sort of grill on the top there uh, where it, the lamination has uh, left its mark. You can barely see it. Um, but on the sides here, you can see that there's uh, clearly... Uh, some issues there and on that side 
Now I'm trying not to use filler if I can because um, uh, sometimes it needs it, sometimes it doesn't. On this side here it's going to need a little bit of filling uh, but on these sides here where it's just the lamination uh, I'm just going to take that down with a little bit of sandpaper. I've got some 320 grit sandpaper. Um, let's find an area that hasn't already been used. And I'm just going to lightly go over it. Now what I'm doing to fill this really is to um, I'll lightly sand it down, go over it with primer and then uh, give it a light sand down again and then hit it with primer again. So I'm not really trying to take the plastic down, I'm just trying to remove excess primer so it sort of levels, the primer goes into the ridges and uh, when you put the next coat of primer on then oh sorry it leaves the primer in the ridges and uh, when you put the next coat of primer on then it sort of levels it up so yeah not trying to do anything too heavy now you can use um, epoxy to fill it <coughs> um, but honestly um, I've seen people uh, talk about things like e ETC, I think it's, that's what it's called, ETC 3D, I think it is. Um, it's just, it's 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 your average epoxy that's just been, I, I, I believe it's just been thinned with alcohol. Um, so, I mean, it, you can, but you, 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 you kind of put in, you're replacing sanding with a hard surface for sanding with a hard surface. So, um... My preference, to be honest with you, is to just do it this way, take off what you can, and then whatever you can't take off, like these deep uh, ridges in there, I'm just going to go with that lightly, just to take some of this down, and then... Uh, go over it with uh, some filler but you can see right there uh, it's already looking a little if damn camera will focus there you go it's already looking a little bit better anyway it's uh, you can still see some cavities there but um, it, it's honestly it's not that bad like I said once you, once you, you hit, hit this with a bit of uh, primer now for the next coat uh, some of this stuff just disappears so usually usually it looks worse than it is but a little bit of work on the cleanup and um, it should be good to go there so I'm gonna hit this with primer and then well, I've got to do this eight more times first, and then uh, then I can hit it with primer. Okay, now that the front end is solidly glued on, and what I've done is, I am just glued it to the top. What I've done is, where there's been this uh, edge running around, I've mixed up some epoxy and just uh, drip-fed epoxy in, in there, so it's 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 solid. I mean, you know, you can, you can pick this up by the nose, no problem at all. There's no chance it's... I mean, you could have done that with it with just the glue, but now that it's epoxied as well, there's there's no chance of this thing coming free. So um, I'm currently detailing up the underside here now, and uh, I've made a piece out of uh, one millimeter styrene, uh, which is just sort of the basic outline, and then I'm going to glue that on, and then that piece goes there, um, and then I got some dressing to go up here. There's a lot more dressing to go on here. For the dressing that goes on top, I'm going to be using uh, 0.5, uh, not 0.25 millimeter styrene, which is really thin um, sheet in uh, this stuff, um, and that just goes on there. Um, so yeah, I'm just basically cutting out the basic shapes now. But whilst uh, I'm doing this, I thought well. Now I've cut this out, I need to sort of clean it up first before I can fit it onto the uh, model. And there's only little things here or there. There's just this, where, where you cut the plastic, you get this edge. And I, you know, I know a lot of people that get this edge and just sort of, you know, go up over it with a bit of sandpaper or whatever. 
Um, I don't do that. When I get an edge like that, I just run my knife down it, and it's gone. And it's li literally gone. And you can hear it as well. You know, so. But yeah, just. Uh, Yep, that edge is gone. I mean, you can hear. You can hear. Nothing. So yeah, I'm just going around all this now. Cleaned up that edge. And around the front there. And you can you can see where you're taking off. But yeah, so now that's clean, fairly cleaned up. Um, I can stick that on. And you're uh, good to go. And there you go, I got plenty of the underside detail on now. This there's still a fair bit to go on um on on the inside here, particularly down the middle, uh on the front end here. Um I, I'm trying trying to look see if I can see anything major. There's nothing really major now to, to go on. There's a couple of strips gotta come down here and here. Um yeah, I mean, there's it's it's mainly this front end now that that really needs detailing up, but it's it's, it's uh, starting to come together, starting to look good. Okay, so I'm getting ready to mould these uh, two little detail pieces for the front of Red Dwarf, and you can see from the gloss in there that I've uh, clearly lubed these up ready. Um, now, what I'm doing for the silicone for this is I mix it up in a small quantity so I, I mix it up in one of these which is just uh, these cheap plastic uh, short glasses that you can get um, I, I buy these by you know I think it, it is something like 25 for a pound I think um, I do that because I use them for absolutely everything uh, these these to me are sort of almost invaluable as a model building tool um, I use it for mixing paint, for holding water, for mixing silicone in small quantities, for um, sometimes thinning filler. Um, they're just really, really useful. Uh, now I'm, I'm, I've got some silicone in here, and I've got my uh, setting agent there. Uh, now this is a slow setting agent, uh, the catalyst. Um, I chose to go for slow because it's. There's a lot of detail in there to capture, and if I if I go with, for the red one, the red it, it it'll it'll capture probably just as well, but I'd rather not risk it. There's no rush to get these things, you know, molded tonight, so I I can I can mold this uh, ready and uh, just leave it until tomorrow, and uh, I hopefully this is unblocked. Yes, yes, it is. Uh, obviously, the more of the catalyst that you add, the quicker it sets up. Um, I, I just my my general rule of thumb is to uh, just make it so that once it once you've when you've done it a few times, you you kind of get to where you know it's going to be. So my general rule of thumb is that you want it a nice color blue. Uh, you don't want it too dark and you don't want it too light. So. You, you you once you've mixed it a few times you you'll understand what sort of color that you're after so i i'm going for this sort of sky blue color um but yeah you you just do it sort of a couple of times and you you sort of get used to uh how much catalyst you want to put in um i might add a little more to this i don't know though it's just pretty it's pretty good color i think that's pretty good actually i, I don't think I'll, I'll put any more in it seems to be. I'm just checking the the sides there because you you want to make sure that you haven't got any white streaks or anything. You don't want that. You want a nice even color right there. You can see the uh, sort of color that I've got there. There's no streak in, and uh, I'm not too worried about putting air bubbles in this because. Uh, it, again, I'm using a slow set in catalyst, so it'll it'll sort of almost degas by itself. So let me just make sure this is done. That is 
sorted. So yeah, once once you've done it a few times, you, you kind of know the sort of colour that you're going for. So you, you kind of understand the, the quantity. Now the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to tip this down at an angle. And when I'm pulling this, I'm actually aiming for the wall. There we go. And now I can start tipping out. I'm not trying to pour this over the parts. Put these down. I'm actually putting it over the bits in between and letting it flood over the parts. And I'm also keeping the, the stream as thin as possible. Uh, the reason why I aim for the wall is because I know that that part is going to be it, it sort of blobs out so I know that that part's going to have the most amount of air in it um, so I don't care if that, that's got a load of air bubbles in it because it's it's excess but uh, as I'm pouring this you should be able to see I don't know if you can or my arms my hands in the way um, it's a bit tough really <laughs> there's not a lot I can do about that there you go so you can see I'm not pouring it over the parts, I'm pouring over the bits in between and uh, just letting it run over. So if I use my other hand, there you go, that makes much more sense. Well, all, all the stuff that I was talking about, you missed. Well, never mind. <laughs> you can kind of see how thin the stream is uh, that, that's coming out. It, it's not very thick of a stream. Uh, it's bursting air bubbles. That was a blob there. Um, so yeah, there, there won't be there won't be a lot of air trapped in this. Now, once this is set up as well, uh, it's kind of it's got a good amount of elasticity to it, so. Getting your parts out isn't a problem. And I think I think I'm gonna call that quits there. Um, the other good thing about using these pots as well is that even if you mix a little bit too much, like I have, you've really yeah haven't wasted a lot of silicone. So we've got this ready now, and uh, I'm just gonna give it a few taps just to get some more air bubbles to the surface. You can see, uh, you see some of the air bubbles there uh, rising up to the top there. Um, so just give it a couple of little taps like that now, and uh, I'm going to put this down and let it set up. Uh, another quick thing, quickly before uh, I move on, um, you see now that I've got a little bit of silicone still left in the bottom there. It's there's there's a there's a bit left in the bottom. There's not not a massive amount. Um, but there's, there's a bit left in there. So now what I'm going to do is, instead of throwing this out, I'm going to leave it there. And the reason why I'm not throwing it out is because instead of going over and checking the mould and seeing if the mould is dry, uh, where you can put it in and you can end up lifting the mould or you can end up uh, getting all stuck to your fingers, I can just check this instead. So uh, instead of uh, farting about with the mould, I can do it that. And... Uh, I can leave the mold alone and once this is set up I know once this is dry and cured then I know that the other silicone is cured as well and then I can just demold it so that's why I'm not throwing this out okay so what I'm doing right now is I'm laying down some of the pieces for uh, the detailing and I've just cut a piece of styrene and I'm laying it down uh, where it needs to be uh, now one of the things that I do to make sure that I lay it down correctly is I've marked out exactly where it needs to go and all I've done here is I've stuck down one side with a piece of masking tape and the reason why I've done that is because now I can pick this up put some glue on on this and get it right on put it back down give it a press peel off the masking and that's spot on in the right place 
and it's that simple. You just make sure you mark it out, you put it in the right place, put a bit of tape on it, and then it's not going to move. You can lift it up like a hinge, and then put some glue on it, and it's all good. Okay, I've got these resin parts now, that are fresh from the mould. Um, I've got to sand these back a little bit, so I'm going to leave them dry for a bit longer and cure properly, so that... Uh, because resin, even though it's come out of the mould and it's been... Um, it's been given time to harden, it can still be a little bit placid, so I'm going to leave it for a touch longer. Might even leave it till tomorrow, but we'll, we'll see. Um, so right now I'm actually making a, a detailed piece now for the uh, middle here, which uh, fits on, on about there. Um, I'm, I'm basically all I've done is uh, I've cut the piece out, I've chamfered the corners uh, by uh, just trimming them with a knife and now what I'm going to do now is I've got to trim and chamfer this edge so I'm just going to run the knife down this edge like this and this should give me pretty decent chamfer I don't know it's difficult to see that um, let's zoom out a little bit more it should be able to focus on that there you go so now you can see there's a bit of a chamfer on that edge, and it's, it's lit literally that simple. I'm just going down here, and uh, let's just trim that bit off there. But yeah, I'm just putting the knife on there, and keeping it at that angle. I'm just trimming that down, step at a time, and then you end up with this really sort of nice uh, bevel to the edge. So... I'm going to do that on both sides and then I'm going to trim it again. I mean, I'm going to check the angle as well, so that, you know, to make sure that both sides are the same. I'm, I'm holding it in pretty much the same position, so it should. It should, uh, just, uh, Oh, actually, yeah, that, that looks pretty good. It's not bad. I've seen worse. Um, yeah, so now what I've got to do now is just trim this back edge. Like so. Just have a little bit of a chamfer on that. Nothing too much. And I'm going to trim these corner pieces now to uh, put a bit more of a chamfer on these. And then it can be glued on. So we use a quick little light in test. Um, I think it, it it looks great. I think everything looks uh, exactly as I intended it to be. Um, there are varying levels of light, so that's 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 good. That's exactly what what, what I'm after. I don't want sort of um, all the windows to be sort of uh, blow burn your eyes out bright. Um, and this is a glow. This is a nice glow. Um, it's the same here. If I look, pick up the front here, it's just so you, so you can see, there's the glow in the nozzle there. So it's not overkill, but it's you can definitely see it there. Um, so that looks good. Uh, we've got all the front end where the, oh shit, they weren't glued on clearly. Um, but yeah, this is where all the windows are going to be on the front end. Um, so that's lit up nice. You've got all this in here. So yeah, it's all looking, it's all looking pretty good. Where do these go? Ah, one there, and one there. But yeah, I mean, it's uh, it's look, not looking too bad. Okay, so I've got most of the underside and bottom side details um, on. You can see the there. Let me just turn this way; it's probably easier. Uh, all that side is detailed up and ready to go. Um, we've got the front end there. That's all detailed up, and the underside, and it's, it's, it is really sort of coming together now. It's really start, starting to sort of uh, pick up pace. I've just started putting these details on here, um, with all these little pieces everywhere, matching the the studio model. And obviously these are in clear because obviously I need light to come through them for windows. Um, but yeah, it's it's starting to take shape now. It's really, it's really starting to look like Red Dwarf. Okay, I've put the rear engine bell, or the housing for the rear engine bells, uh, on. 
uh, that's fitted and what I've done for that is basically because I can't get inside there to uh, do any sort of real filling what I've done was basically I just mixed up some of the uh, two part epoxy and I packed it all the way around the edge or as much as I could really um, whilst it was up the other way so I just slopped it in then I took some uh, CA and went right way around the, the ring flipped it over put it down in position rather quickly um, and basically what that's done now is it's allowed the epoxy to run down the, the sides of the engine now onto there so it should aside from the fact that the CA should have just bonded it strongly to the uh, back end anyway um, that should now be running down and making a join between uh, this part here and the back end of Red Wolf so it it should be a really really strong bond I mean I should be able to already I'm gonna just oh <laughs> now that's chance isn't it um, yeah that's that's a strong bond there's no I, I, that, that, that this this weighs a little bit now and um, for it to for me to be able to pick that up <laughs> that was a bravery test that was but uh, yeah so this is now on and now I can look at I'm gonna leave that uh, cure for the next five to ten minutes and then I, I can start looking at uh, possibly potentially maybe perhaps getting those damn engine bells on okie dokie I have given these a couple of coats of red so that they are well they need to be weathered first before they, they can do anything with them but I've given them a couple of coats of red now just to sort of uh, get things moving in the right direction uh, I've also painted this red as well just because with the black in there it's just going to be easier uh, with, with fitting these boosters in uh, it'll, it'll just be awkward just to work the paint in and around so I figured I'd give it a couple of coats of red first um, and it's uh, once these boosters are in let's just fit one in so you can see that's roughly how, how they set now you can obviously you're not going to be able to see like in here in, into sort of the inner core so uh, that's why I want to weather them first is because it's going to be really tricky to weather them otherwise um, but yeah there's a little bit of uh, black paint need to, needs to be applied to the uh, stem first uh, just, to, just to make sure and then obviously like I said I'll weather these up get these fitted into here and then this can then be fitted onto the back well not yet anyway because I've, I've I've got to remember to wire up the lights for the back first. That's kind of important. Um, otherwise I've been spending a long time doing that for nothing. Um, so yeah. So where, where am I at? Well I've got the, the, the bridge parts uh, coming along. I've, I've, what I've done here is I've actually gone over these with uh, an epoxy and I've started sanding them down just to get them uh, smoother. Um, because they, need to be, they do need to be quite smooth. So um, there's a little bit of shape in there, got to, got to go on there, but it's, it looks a bit messy, but you know, it's, uh, that's, that's kind of the way it work. Kind of put it on, any, as long as it's on, slop it on, and then just sand it back, and uh, that, that kind of works for me anyway. Um, so really and truly, you know, aside from the fact that they've got the fork moulding, um, I really, I, you know, and I've got to carry on detailing up this side here. Um... There's not a whole hell of a lot uh, uh, left to do really for, the, for this part of the build. Um, but yeah, it's going to be principally now just getting all this, this stuff on. All the, the plant on details first. Then we've got all the minor details like uh, odd shapes, pipes and, and, and whatnot to go on. Um, hemispheres, that sort of stuff. Um, but yeah, you, you know week five and uh, it's starting to, it is really taking shape so I'm very happy with, the, with how this is going and just give you a proper look at the model so you can see you know all that detail looks beautiful like I said there's, there's more to go on here obviously but um, and there's a little bit of a gap there which I have to uh, sort out that came from having to chop that section out, but um, but yeah, I mean, 
<laughs> it really does start to look like the Crimson Short one itself. There you go. Now you can get to see some of the, some of the how, how many of these squares have actually had to sort of chamfer down. And, Uh, there's a bit of extra detail going to go up here, I think, and a little piece there. But aside from that, um, I think most of this bo uh, bottom side here is, uh, or lower side, um, is done. There's a bit of gap filling going to go there, and a bit of gap filling going to go there. Um, and these, these pieces are pure, which got to be sorted out. Um, but yeah, you know what? It's a, a little piece at a time, but it's getting there. So I'm going to leave that there. Um, what I find interesting about this build is that uh, every now and again I keep comparing the model that I'm building to the model that I built. My my Red Dwarf. And every time I do, I, I notice just how inaccurate mine is. Like it, there's little things, just small things. Mine has, for example, mine has nowhere near the amount of surface detail that's going on this one, like not even close um, but mine still looks like Red Dwarf so that's I, I guess I've done something right um, <laughs> but yeah it's nowhere near, nowhere near the same level of detail and um, they, they notice difference in sizes and difference in, in in the shape of it you know it's, it's only it's like small things but it all seems to add up like mine still looks like Red Dwarf but when this one's finished, this one will be Red Dwarf. So, um, yeah, I'm, I'm, but I'm really happy with the progress. Uh, again, I wish the detail in would go a little bit quicker just so that I could get... I, I really, I'm at a stage now where I'm starting to get a bit frustrated because I need to get... I, I want to get some primer on the model and I want to get some paint on it. And, um, but, you know, I'm, I'm patient enough to sort of wait it, wait it out and just go... One thing at a time, just deep breath, one thing at a time, and, and you'll get there. So, um, but I, I don't imagine it's too long, because I've already started putting paint on, so it, it won't be too long. The stuff that I can paint, you know, I'm not going to rush it though. I'm, I'm, I'm just basically putting paint on the stuff that, to all intents and purposes, is either going to be trickier a little bit later, or, um, but yeah, I'll just leave it at that. Anyway, I'm going to leave the video there and I'm going to say if you've enjoyed this model update feel free to like and comment on this video, give me the thumbs up, uh, share the video as well, I'd be grateful, subscribe to this channel, that would always be uh, a nice thing to do, nice gesture, go on, go on, I dare you, I, I, I double dare you, but until next time, I'll see you later guys.